<laughs> you, when was that yesterday you were at Bl Blarney Island? Uh, yeah, no, uh, Saturday. I worked the whole weekend. Did you? I, I only did. had. I, I had a busy. I had a busy weekend. I guess that's good. Yeah. Did you? Um, you were up at the house all weekend. Are you uh, back yeah. to the city today? I came down for a. Uh, yeah, I'm up at the house. I came down for a showing Saturday morning and then came back. But yeah. <laughs> that's no fun that you get to be that you have to be the designated driver. You don't get to have any fun that way. Well, I don't drink like them anyway, but you, you what? I said I don't drink like they do anyway. Well, and I mean, let's let's be honest. If it's like a biker bar, it's like, is there anything really worth drinking anyway? <laughs> I'm such a cocktail snob, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll say. <laughs> they drink beer. What? They drink beer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, 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 beer. I, I enjoy a, a nice cold beer this time of year. Donnie thinks cocktails are the most ridiculous thing he's ever heard of. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean? Why does he think they're ridiculous? He thinks it's silly. <laughs> well, the cocktails that he drinks probably are. He doesn't drink cocktails. He drinks beer. Like Budweiser, well, right? Or M, M, what is it? What, M, M, G, what is it? M, M, G, D? No. What do they call Miller's? Oh, Miller, Miller, M, G, yeah, Miller Genuine Draft. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't drink it. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what Donnie and them drink. <laughs> uh, he, is, he is Miller Light, Bud Light, that kind of thing. Yeah. That, that is like, by, by the to, me, that, to me, that is like so gross, but okay. <laughs> and that's what he thinks about cocktails. Plus, he thinks it's silly and expensive for no reason. Well, here, yeah, well, I mean, I guess it depends on why you drink, right? I mean, if you're just drinking to see how drunk you can get, well, then I agree. He drinks us for release. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to say that, that, may, that cocktail, well, okay, we don't have to have this argument because you, you don't agree with him anyway. <laughs> no, I don't. But that's a little bit like, like saying that, to have a chef cook your dinner is, is silly and stupid too. Yeah, he would probably agree with that too. <laughs> his favorite, famously, his favorite cuisine is bowling alley food. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I don't understand what the hell he's doing living in Oak Park then. <laughs> he lives in Galewood. Oh, well. He lives across the street from Oak Park. Across the street, yeah. But I, I, I don't think of Oak Park as being highfalutin with... Well, food. no, not really, but I mean, it's... Well, I mean, there's Oak Park and there's Oak Park, right? <laughs> I, I mean, mean there's, there's, honestly, Frank I Lloyd Wright uh, part, there's the Frank Lloyd Wright part of Oak Park. And... Yeah, but I think the, uh, the food and beverage offerings in Oak Park isn't quite what you think it would be, you yeah. know? Well, I mean, that's true of the suburbs in general, actually. Yeah. I mean, we've had this conversation many times about, I actually had a showing on, I have a, this condo for sale over in Belmont Harbor, and um, there's a young guy with his folks came to look at it yesterday, and uh, he works at a lab in uh, Mundelai, and he does... Um, a lab research. So he has to go into the lab because I asked him, I said, well, can you work remotely? He's like, no, I have to be in the lab every day because they're doing, you know, whatever they're doing. Probably works at it. Well, he said it was Mundelein. That wouldn't be Abbott. So I don't know what lab it would be. Well, but... Abbott's kind of all over up there. So they, they, yeah. may, be, they may have something in, in Mundelein. They might have something in Mundelein, but it might not. He didn't say Abbott. It, it might not be Abbott. I don't know. But, uh, but anyway. Abbott and Abv are kind of spread out all over Lake County. You know? Well, they're all, yeah, I mean, they have that huge campus in, in North Chicago. And then, of course, there's the other campus. One is Abbott, and the other is AbV. They split it up into two different companies. They have the com they have the campus on the water in North Chicago on the waterfront. And they have that huge one out by the tri-state. 
yeah, that's in Lake Forest. And then there's the one there, they've got buildings in Waukegan, they've got the V on uh, Highway 60 and uh, and uh, 294. Um, well, oh, that might be where he's working, Mattawa, I think. Yeah, um, they've got them all over. That's yeah. kind of well, Munda Line's further west, but yeah. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, they they live in they live in like he's living at home with his folks right now in Lake Forest, and uh, but uh, he wants to come into the city because you know he wants he wants a city lifestyle, mm -hmm. and um, even though he'll have to commute out to Munda Line every day, so that'll be quite a commute for him. From Belmont Harbor up to Mundelein. That's got to be a good 45 minutes. Why? What's going on? What are you looking at? It looked like, I guess that's your wall. It looks like there was a, uh, I don't know, a sidebar on the screen, but um, I guess it's just your wall. It looks like it was a sidebar with something on it that you had. better? <laughs> Well, yeah, you're, you're, it was right at the edge of your arm and it looked like the, uh, oh. well, keep going, keep going, I'll show you. And then your arm was all the way behind the dress, in front of the dresser. So oh. it looked like there was a sidebar with something that you were Those are actually to file cabinets. Those are actually file cabinets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have my icons. And your uh, music whatever that music is you've got framed up there, it looked like something you were trying to, as you can see the bottom corner, it looked like you were sharing your screen with something. Oh, weird. Huh. Yeah, that was actually a wedding gift. What is it? it? It's It was a wedding gift from my composition prof. Well, I, I get that, but I'm saying, what is it? <laughs> what do you mean, what is it? Oh, well, let me I can't, I can't tell what it, oh. I mean, I can tell it's music, but that's all I can tell. It's uh, like Gregorian chant. Oh. See, it's like, yeah, there's getting reflection because of the. You can see, you can see the lake behind and the reflection. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let me turn it around so that it doesn't have light reflecting on it. Then you can see it. Okay, now you get to see my whole living room now. Oh, I see. I always thought you were in one of the in one of the bedrooms. No. Now. It's still getting a little bit of a reflection, but now can you see what it is? It's Gregorian chant. Well, yeah, obviously I can't read it, but yeah, I, I wouldn't know that it was a Gregorian chant. <laughs> you wouldn't know. Well, that's what it is. It's like you know, uh, you know, when the monks used to uh, I don't know. chant. <laughs> yeah, they used to. You know, they used to like draw the Bi They used to write the Bibles and stuff. You know, they used to calligraphy the Bibles and whatnot mm -hmm. anyway never mind that's that's what it is okay i gotta hang it back up again after i call now <laughs> well your setup there is in your living room yeah the, actually it's it's where my grand piano was supposed to go oh so what do you have in the in the bedrooms are they strictly bedrooms no uh the one bedroom is our is our master bedroom you know the primary bedroom and bathroom with a walk-in closet then um, then the second bedroom is actually our TV room. Mm. Then our third bedroom is Bob's office. It's where it's command central. Okay. He has all the he has all of the files and, <laughs> and everything. All the buttons and levers. Yeah, he has all the buttons. So I'm I'm actually in our living room. And I don't know if you can see dining room and then the kitchen beyond it's okay. all one big open room i didn't clean the house i'm not sure i should be doing this <laughs> looks pretty good to me okay all right well you can't see i mean you know, i can't see all the dirt you can't see all the dirt right? <laughs> i don't have too much stuff thrown around but <laughs> anyway so that that that's our house okay yeah so i sit in the corner of the living room and Initially, uh, when we first moved here, I just sat at the dining room table and did all of my work at the dining room table. And um, but then uh, the movers couldn't get the uh, piano up the uh, up the elevator. It didn't fit in the elevator to get it up here. Oh, so I didn't I remember that. What? I didn't remember that. Remember that that was the problem. 
Yeah, that was the problem. It, it, they couldn't get it into the elevator. The day we were moving, they they couldn't get it into the elevator. I was so they took it back um, to the warehouse to store it until I figured out what to do about it or with it. And uh, it was actually um, uh, Bob's brother, his piano. It was a Steinway a Studio Grand. It's a really lovely piano. And well, is a studio grand bigger than a baby grand? Yeah, baby grand is kind of a yes. I mean, grand uh, grand pianos don't don't really come in quote standard sizes, but um, um, but yeah, there's kind of a quote baby grand, um, which I don't know. So well, would you consider getting one of those? Probably not, because the whole point of having a grand piano is is the length of the of the strings and the bass notes. That's kind of the limiting factor. So, like a spinet, for instance, is an upright. Yeah, but if you if it's for your home, does that really matter? If it's for you yeah. to play, if you're not performing for an audience, would does that? Well, really I would never perform for an audience because that's not my gig. But, but that's but that's my point. Like, well, then why would it matter if it's not the absolute perfect length of the string to, to get just the right sound? Well, out of who else story? am I playing for if not for myself? So it's nothing. It's all or nothing then. No, I mean no, no. But I mean, well, never mind. It's hard to explain. <laughs> So, but you wouldn't get another piano then that would fit in there because it doesn't sound like you want it to sound? Well, I don't know. I'm not at the, I'm not at the point where I'm prepared to invest in a, in a piano. I mean, if I'm going to get a piano, <laughs> if I'm going to get a piano, I want to get a, I want to get the piano that I want, right? Because, I mean, to me, a grant, so, so there's a baby grant, to get back to the original conversation, <laughs> it's like uprights. There's different, there's different type lengths of strings in the uprights, right? So you have like a spinet, then you have like a, I don't know what I don't know what they're called, but there's different heights of uprights. And and the original upright were actually this had this full length of bass strings that a grand piano had. It's just that they flipped it on its edge so that it would take up less room. So. Uh, but for those are the real tall ones. You'll see like the old piano, the old uprights that are always very tall because, because it had to do with the length of the bass strings. But uh, anyway, but then, so, so there's, there's baby grands, which is kind of comparable to a spinet. And then there's a studio grand. And then of course, for the concert hall, you have the concert grands, which are usually like, I think about nine or 10 feet long. Whereas a studio grand is maybe seven feet long. So, I mean, it's not a standard size, but it's not a So, hmm. um, but for a concert hall, of course, you need big sound to, to play over above the orchestra. I'm surprised it wouldn't fit at only seven feet. I'm surprised it wouldn't fit in the, the elevator. Maybe it's just the overall shape and size of it. Yeah, I don't know. Now that you've said because they get, I mean, we get sofas much longer than that You're and right. stuff in all those elevators. I yeah. So but it had, it had to do with you know what it had to do with the hallway, what the elevator empties onto. They could they couldn't get it. They couldn't turn it to get it hmm. in. So through the door, I think they couldn't turn it to get it in through the door because the door on an elevator is only. I don't know. I didn't, it didn't fit. <laughs> it didn't it's surprising now that you say the size of it, that is just surprising. Well, maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe they are longer, but I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know. Now I have to go look at my notes again and if I kept them. I Do you know? It's probably, well, I don't know. But is, it, is there such a thing as uh, more of the full size concert or whatever size pianos? that are made to kind of collapse to, to move in and out of spaces or not? Well, the legs come off and stuff like that to move them, but no, the actual sounding board is not collapsible. 
you know, that's that's in the that's in. in well, that part I get. It just seems like maybe that with everything else that they could make it so that it came into two pieces or something so that it would fit and things like that. But yeah, no, <laughs> no. I mean, if it was just the soundboard, I can't imagine that it wouldn't have fit on the elevator. Well, I mean, sure, you could take the piano apart and bring it up in pieces, but mm -hmm. then you got to, yeah, no, I mean, you know, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so I ended up actually giving the piano to uh, our uh, assistant music director at church because she, as all, as all musicians are, hand to mouth and never have any money to spare for anything. And, you know, as a professional musician, she should have a decent instrument, right? So she was, she, I wanted to, I wanted to go someplace that would be used and enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Good. And yeah. Yeah. So I, I was pleased with that, but I wasn't happy to lose my piano, of course, but you know, everything happens for a reason, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been listening to, I read a book a client turned me on to called Every Good Boy Does Fine, which if anybody knows how to read music you'll recognize the um it's a mnemonic it's, like, it's what a b d g a b d g right. it's, a, it's a mnemonic to remember the the staves on the music staff in the treble clef every good boy does fine and this is a, a, a memoir written by a concert pianist who i'd actually never heard of before uh, by the name of jeremy denk and he sort of tells his story of how, you know, growing up as a kid and music lessons and how he became um, a concert pianist. And it's, it's quite an interesting story. So I, I, I read the book and he goes through a lot of little examples of, of things that he's learning. He actually has a playlist. And at the beginning of every chapter, he has a playlist of the works that he's going to discuss in the chapter. And then at the end of the book, he has an extensive appendix of all these different uh, works that he's performed and, and his comments about them. So it's almost the kind of book, if you're if you're into it, <laughs> that um, that you could actually. I could, I could pretty much. I could pretty much say no. I'm not. No, I know, but I'm just saying. I was just thinking that sounds absolutely like hell to me. <laughs> well, I ended up getting the audio book because in the audio book he reads it himself, but he also will sit down at the piano and play play the little snippets that he's talking about, which is kind of enormously helpful in understanding yeah. what he's talking about. So it's probably a little dense for. Um, it's probably a little over the top for somebody who's not. I, I sent it to a to a to a friend who uh, uh, is a music lover, and she thought it was too technical. And I thought he actually, which was interesting that she said that because I thought he did a good job of. I don't know if the word is dumbing down, but explaining what he was talking about and sort of non, in, in, in layman's terms rather than professional music speak you know <laughs> but but she but she felt it was still too too uh, uh obtuse or whatever yeah too technical so mm -hmm. anyway yeah every good boy does fine by jeremy dick for those music lovers out there <laughs> for those of you who really need to dig in you really need to do it. no i mean it's a nice story it's it's a it's a nice story that he tells about how he became a concert pianist and, and, and here this was so funny he ends up going to Oberlin and he goes to Oberlin because they a have an excellent music department and there was a professor there that he wanted to study piano with and b they have an excellent just kind of overall um you know school you know mm -hmm. an excellent school outside of music and uh he wasn't sure if he wanted to go into chemistry or if he wanted to become a, a musician because his parents did not necessarily encourage him to become a professional musician thinking that you know he'd have a tough time making a living that way so he uh, so he was he was doing like a double major and ended up in in biochemistry or something like that i mean it's like do i want to be a nuclear physicist or do i want to play the piano <laughs> One of those. 
one of those, right? So the guy's obviously brilliant, you know. Yeah. And, and in fact, he uh, he got one of those MacArthur uh, Genius Grants. He doesn't talk about that in the book at all, but he is a recipient of the MacArthur Genius Grant. You know, one of those MacArthur. Poor guy. <laughs> I think those uh, MacArthur grants are are, are uh, as amazing and astounding. I think it's such a great thing to award people. Mm -hmm. Just give them money to hey, let these people let let's see what they come up with. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, such a great concept. Hmm. I agree. All right. So next well, week is thanks Labor for the music Day. lesson. What? Thanks for the music lesson. <laughs> Sorry, you got me going. Oh, it was good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, thank you. So next week is Labor Day. I guess we're not. We're going to be right. next yeah. week. Right? We'll see everybody in two weeks then. What's that? Yeah. I guess we'll see everybody in two weeks. It's hard to believe that that summer's uh, over. Uh, so sad, right? Are you yeah. are you taking off? You going anywhere? Doing anything? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not. Anne I'm not. got back from her bit holiday. I covered for her while she was away. What a week she had! Oh, really? She, yeah, she took a new new listing that I that I helped her. Um, you know, I met the photographer and helped her get input and whatnot. And uh, we had a showing there Saturday, and she ended up putting a deal together. We had one oh, showing, wow. and she got it sold. I know, isn't that great? Isn't that great? And uh, yeah. and she had some buyers that got under contract, and uh, she got another listing that she. Oh, while she was gone. All, all while she was gone, I said, I think there's a moral in there somewhere. We yeah. should all take more time off. <laughs> True. Anyway. All right, all right. everybody. Have we'll a have week. a good holiday. Have a safe holiday. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Bye.